Hi, my name is Denise Jones, and I wrote my paper on Albert Einstein and his major theories. Close your eyes and imagine living in a world without the technology that we have today. Think of things such as computers, television, or even smaller things that are taken for granted, such as a scanner hooked up to a cash register. We owe most of the technology we use today to a man named Albert Einstein. He may not have invented the objects himself, but his theories and ideas helped lead us to the technological advancement that we have had. He did not only play a big part in helping the world evolve to what we know it as today, but he also made a gigantic impact specifically onto the scientific community. Albert Einstein, the man that will forever be known as a genius, helped the scientific community in many ways with the theories that he created over the span of his lifetime. Einstein finished his high school career in the year 1896 as he continued on to college and completed his formal education in Zurich in 1900. Five short years later, he basically created a year noted as the Annus Mirabilis, or the Miracle Year, for the simple fact that Einstein wrote four papers that affected the scientific community as a whole. We still use his theories and equations in present day, that is, how effective his papers were and still are. He started off the year with his paper on the quantum theory. Shortly after, he published two papers on the atom, proving that atoms exist, and finally, his fourth paper was written on the special theory of relativity. This paper introduced the famous equation that all physicists know and love, E equals mc squared. Even after all the excitement of the Annus Mirabilis, Einstein continued his studies and continued writing theories. The next no prominent theory that was published by Einstein was his great general theory of relativity. This theory pushed the special theory of relativity a little further and added gravity into the equation. Not everybody had accepted his theories right away. Unfortunately, everything takes time, including understanding ideas that were never put forward previously. It was not until 1920 that his theories from the Miracle Year were actually understood and widely accepted. The first of four papers written by Einstein during the Annus Mirabilis, the year 1905, was a quantum theory. This states that both light and matter consist of tiny particles which have wave-like properties associated with them. This brought upon the realization that light is made up of particles, in which Einstein named photons, and the realization that matter is made up of atoms, which are made up of particles named electrons, protons, and neutrons. Using this information, Einstein and other scientists were able to pay particular attention to light and the way that it moves and is transmitted in waves and the way that it interacts with objects. Basically, the quantum theory of light shows that particles are responsible for the transmission of light throughout the universe. One example would be how the light how the sun's light reaches Earth. The sun transmits photons that travel at the speed of light and eventually reach the Earth. This idea can also be applied to anything and everything else that lets off light, such as something simple like a light bulb, or something bigger or more complex as other stars or galaxies in the universe. Einstein took the photoelectric effect, the way that electrons are emitted when a light is shown onto a clean metal surface, and applied it to his work on the quantum theory of light. He used this effect to prove that light was made up of particles. He was able to use his interpretation and inspiration of Max Planck's work on the quantum postulate and used it to prove the photoelectric effect. Although this was a huge discovery for the scientific community, it was not the only theory that Einstein created. The next two papers that Einstein wrote during the Annus Mirabilis contributed to proving that atoms really do exist. Even in the beginning 20th century, scientists were fighting over whether or not atoms existed. Einstein was the first person to ever conduct experiments that prove that there are such things as atoms. He proved this in his contribution to the atomic theory. This theory states that all matter is composed of tiny, discrete, finite, indivisible, indestructible particles. By writing this paper, Einstein not only made a groundbreaking discovery, but he also helped prove the quantum theory, which states that everything is made up of particles, including light. In fact, the quantum theory was just a stepping stone in Einstein's papers, and it brought him straight to the atomic theory. The atomic theory began with works from many other scientists beginning in the 18th century. This included the works from a scientist named John Dalton. Dalton published a paper on the topic in the early 19th century, but unfortunately, the community did not take a liking to his paper. It remained extremely controversial for the rest of the century. That is, until Einstein got a hold of the information. Einstein resolved the controversy with his contribution to the theory. The atom was named after the Greek word for indivisible, in which we now know it is divisible with consequences. Because of Einstein's contribution to the atomic theory, we now have the atomic bomb. 
It was just another technological and weapon advancement made because of one of Einstein's theories. In June of 1905, Einstein published a paper that changed the world of physics named the Special Theory of Relativity. The theory can be defined as a physical theory of relativity based on the assumption that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant, and the assumption that the laws of physics are irrelevant in all inertial systems. This sums up to mean that when paying special attention to two moving objects in a vacuum and their relation to each other, one does not have to include variables such as the speed of light or gravity since both variables are considered constant in a vacuum. Not too long after writing the theory, Einstein created an extension to the paper introducing the famous equation of E equals mc squared. The equation literally translates to the energy of a given body is equal to the mass of the body multiplied by the speed of light squared. This was a big step for the scientific community since this equation shows that energy and mass have a direct relationship to each other. With this equation, he showed that the mass of atoms contains enormous quantities of energy. This equation combined with the atomic theory gives us the idea that every atom has mass that can be converted into energy. This is one of many reasons why we have technologies such as the television and digital camera. Naturally, there are so-called consequences to the theory, such as the idea that velocity is infinite. This means that no object can ever be faster than the speed of light. Another consequence would include the speed of light directly. This consequence shows that the speed of light is constant for all observers, regardless of their speed. It also shows that if someone shines a light out of a moving bus, the speed of light remains the same for both observers. And finally, the last consequence that will be discussed is the one that includes E equals mc squared. This equation shows that energy and mass are equivalent and transmutable. Of course, Einstein did not take full credit for his discoveries. Even a genius needs his inspirations, and he just happened to be the father of modern physics, James Clerk Maxwell. Einstein showed his appreciation of Maxwell when he stated, the special theory of relativity owes its origins to Maxwell's equations of the electromagnetic field. On the 100th anniversary of Maxwell's birth, Einstein was not completely satisfied by ending his discoveries with this theory, so he continued his experiments and research until he came up with a new theory years later. Ten years after the Annus Mirabilis, Albert Einstein wrote another paper. This time he considered gravity. It is called the General Theory of Relativity. Princeton defines this as a generalization of special relativity to include gravity. Being simply defined, this theory is derived from the special theory of relativity, making it closely related. All great theories have to start somewhere. This theory started not only with a special theory, but with a principle named the equivalence principle, which states that gravity accelerates all objects equally regardless of their masses or the materials from which they are made. This led to the realization that an object in free fall falls the way it does because there are no forces acting on the object except for the force of gravity. Einstein used this theory to help show that matter and energy mold the shape of space and the flow of time. He was very adamant in his belief that there are some connection between time, matter, space, and energy. The general theory of relativity differs from the special theory of relativity in a way that it includes larger objects on the astrophysical level rather than two particles being compared to each other. Because of this, the general theory was not widely accepted at first. Scientists saw that they did not have much use for a theory that focused mainly on a larger scale after many years of research, Einstein came up with theories that changed the way that scientists and everyday people see the universe. The scientists use the information are able to learn more about the universe and the Earth, whereas everyday people learn the information through school. After all, without Albert Einstein and his theories, life would not be the same as we know it today.